Get your indie fix at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Get 15% off any digital download with the coupon code Get that cookie. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, welcome back to the Indie Mayhem Show. It's episode six. We're still rolling. I got another great interview, one I'm, I'm really looking forward to myself. Um, of course, our intro by Basic Sickness. Check them out at basicsickness.com. You can check out all the stuff, download it for free, support some local music here, here in Pittsburgh. But hey, uh, I think all you guys are going to enjoy that kind of stuff. Uh, of course, uh, with me, as usual, is Eamon. The uh, announcer for uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling down there in San Antonio. How you doing? Or Austin. Well, I'm in San Antonio. I don't know. You're somewhere in Texas. We're we're taking over Texas. You're taking over. You're taking over. Of course, I'm, I'm Mike Sorg. I do the video for uh, some local companies here uh, in the Pittsburgh area as well with SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, we got a fine little store over there, as you saw in the ad here at the beginning. Um, so, so, hey, man, who are we talking with uh, this week? I am very excited for the guest that we have this week, Sorg, and I, I'm sure you will be too. Um, the uh, getting to some, uh, another guy I got to work with uh, with Inspire Pro. Um, this person uh, you may know him uh, if you are a big uh, independent movie fan uh, of his work with uh, uh, putting together the Greenlist Studios, where he produces movies with uh, tons of things involving professional wrestling that we'll sh- be sure to get into. But also, he is the uh, media director for Inspire Pro Wrestling, where he produces our lovely shows now look fantastic uh, and we get to talk to him ab- about all things uh that he is doing uh from greenless studios mr lex Librand. lex how are you i'm good i'm really good you know self Very good. Prom- promotion where is it at i'm trying to show you my poster <laughs> there you go <laughs> But very, very glad to have you on. I'm very excited to sort of we, – we're trying – definitely with this indie show, it's not just indie wrestlers. We want to get people from a lot of different perspectives uh, in the indie wrestling world. Um, so before we talk about uh, your work for Inspire Pro Wrestling, you obviously um, – uh, well, you actually, before I talk about your movie stuff, you actually do have a bit of a past in wrestling. Uh, some of the stuff that people may know about you. I know you you, you were training for uh, to be a wrestler at some point when you were uh, living in Florida. Am I correct? Well, I went to wrestling school. I, w- I wouldn't say I was training <laughs> to be a wrestler. Um, I, I didn't have any real aspirations. It was kind of like um, I got into web design really young, and I was part of the culturally relevant backyard wrestling phenomenon. Um, <laughs> not crazy, you know, like jumping off of roofs or setting people on fire. Like we wanted to learn how to wrestle, and we had a really good website that was just basically us in white tank tops posing and pretending to be wrestlers. Uh, but we had a better website than all of the indie uh, companies in Tampa at the time. And so we kind of started some smack talk with uh, one of the promotions that happened to run a school. And they tried to pull like a scared straight on us and invite us out <laughs> to the school and show us how hard it really was. And we just, we loved it. So we spent, uh, three or four weeks that summer going to wrestling school for free and uh we kind of bled them dry until until we couldn't go for free anymore so it was awesome but uh, so that was, i know so that, i know a tiny actually, tiny little bit about what that's like but not enough yeah. to like actually put it on my mantle right but so i guess that you could say that was sort of your first taste of i guess the indie wrestling scene was starting with like the backyard stuff and moving into like the hey like these got you know the sort of more wrestler you know, actual like sort of wrestling based stuff. Yeah, kind of like it, growing up in Tampa, uh, I was exposed to a lot of wrestling, wrestling everywhere. I mean, I went to the same high school as Hulk Hogan, so nice. it's it's in my it's in my blood, brother. Um, <laughs> so I, you know, I went to shows at the Armory, uh, Florida Championship Wrestling, and WA would come through all the time. So I kind of got the feeling and this would just bleed into everything I do creatively. I see something done on an indie level. And my first thought is, well, I could do that. You know, it, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Hannibal or sorry, not Hannibal, uh, Hamlet too. There's a great line about mm. these two rednecks. They're, they're like, well, we've got some wire so we can do wire stunts. That's kind of my attitude. I saw the wire and 
realized that I also had wire. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so that also leads you, I guess, I sort of that philosophy leading you in the same direction of uh, what you're doing. Uh, really great stuff now, which is directing movies. Um, and I mentioned like uh, your stuff with Greenlist Studios, the stuff that you've produced. Like it's a lot of you definitely put a lot of that wrestling influence uh, in there with uh, your movies, uh, Summer League, and also the one you're just coming out with, uh, Meet Me There, who we actually had uh, Brandon Stroud on uh, back during the actual filming of the uh, of the movie to talk about it. Um, so how how has been um, your sort of way to sort of implement that uh, your wrestling lifestyle into those movies? How how, how has that sort of gone? I guess. Uh, sure. Yeah. The, my first film summer league, uh, it's kind of like an, uh, an ode, like a, a love letter to all the baseball movies that mm. I like made me want to make movies watching growing up. So it's, it's basically the sandlot for grownups with, with beer. Um, and I, the approach that I wanted to take to the villain in the film was I wanted him to be like my favorite heel wrestlers to where he's just this, uh, can can I swear on this? I don't want to. Absolutely, yeah, yeah not sure. Okay. <laughs> um, he's he's a he's a lovable asshole, and you can totally see where he's coming from. And an interesting piece of feedback that I got from uh, Brandon Stroud, actually, who's who's in that film uh, as himself, uh, as a, was, and as a mascot. <laughs> yeah, and a duck mascot. Uh, he related more to the villains in the film, and and he could see that see things from their perspective and actually think that you know they're the real heroes and that's kind of what heels are today um mm -hmm. so I, that means i succeeded i, I think <laughs> um and yeah so like he wears he wears a t-shirt in red and yellow uh that's meant to look just like the hulk rules shirts and his name is scott and his shirt says scott rules um <laughs> so there's it, it definitely not not just in a subtext kind of way. It bleeds. It, my love of pro wrestling bleeds through uh, in my films at a very very uh, surface level. Uh, and then of course in Meet Me There, uh, we've gone a step further and cast probably fifteen wrestlers. Uh, mm -hmm. Most notably, of course, is uh, Mr. Dustin Runnels, who you might know by another name. <laughs> The man has been making his rounds, I guess, on, on the mainstream. Um, but that's actually kind of cool, like how you mentioned about the idea of like the heel promo. Um, how I think the big discussion with wrestling in general is sort of like the influence of um, of sort of how people have had to step up their acting ability in a sense, especially on the mainstream. How you know, I think I believe I read somewhere where people you in development now a lot of people are sort of being taught also how to act and how to just sort of that how, how big that aspect sort of plays in it and it's cool to also see i guess from your perspective the reverse of that to where wrestling can sort of create um you know then the uh, the good qualities of a good heel promo for example could create such some, some something so good in a, in a movie yeah it's i mean it's really all about body language and cadence it's it's not about the lines that you're given to read it's a hundred percent about how you deliver them or what you're doing when you're not even delivering lines like bray wyatt is magic whether he's talking or not mm -hmm. just breathing the guy is uh, fun to watch so when somebody has like some really good acting chops you can just see it like no matter what they're doing you you can tell there's something more behind what they're doing at that time versus somebody who's reading really great lines and they might deliver what people will kind of herald as a as a great promo but then when you when you watch it back it's like well that was written well but he's just screaming at me and it doesn't sound like he means anything and it doesn't fit mm -hmm. his character so heels are always more interesting to me because the characters uh, can can have so many more dimensions, and they're usually there's usually more to them because I don't know, uh, they're just better. <laughs> it, it's always, it's always well, it's always more fun because they, they always say with with heels like to be a good heel, you have to believe what you're saying. You know, we look at Mick Foley, ECW with the Kane Dewey. Look at uh, Chris Jericho. I, I've listened to some of his podcasts talking about how he took some uh, some 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 uh, acting classes, and and that brought into his. Uh, what was it? It's 2007, 2008 when he came back with the suit and was doing the stuff with Shawn Michaels, which I think everybody was a really big fan of. Um, um, it, I think there's more opportunity to be complex there. Just that, just 
you know, as a role. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Uh, it's when there, there's just more reasoning behind actions for some reason with heels, it's, it seems to be more likely that a face is going to cut the, you know, hometown cheap pop mention to mm. get facey than a heel who, you know, it, it's uh, also like if you, it, let's say you're in Tampa, for instance, and you're a heel and you're trying to get heat by ripping on the bucks, everybody <laughs> in the audience is just going to be like, okay, yeah, they suck. What else do you get? We know. Yeah. So, um, it's, I was it's just, just up like I saw this coming. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Jericho, though. I wish the dude would grow his hair back. I think he looks <laughs> weird with his Bon Jovi haircut. Yeah. His new um, school Bon Jovi haircut. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, to sort of combine, I guess, those two worlds of movies and, and directing movies and also uh, wrestling, uh, the reason I definitely wanted to have you on is because uh, starting back in October, uh, you started working for uh, Inspire Pro, uh, doing our uh, video production uh, of our shows. Um, and uh, I know we, when we asked you on, we were, you had first done our website, which I... I will tell anyone is amazing. Like I, it, it's beyond what I could expect from uh, uh, something you know, uh, as, as sort of like thrown away usually as a wrestling website tends to be. Like it's, it, I, I love it. Um, but now you're starting to work for our video production stuff. Uh, how, how would you? How is your sort of reaction to uh, uh, getting the offer? I guess you could say to sort of uh, wor uh, work for an uh, indie wrestling company now, uh, doing video production. Um, well, I was real happy to jump on that opportunity. I'm I'm in post production on two movies right now, including. Let me make sure I'm pointing over the right shoulder, including that one. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of winding down on this heavy after hours workload that I've been keeping for the last year. Um, so I'm I'm looking for like the next you know big project to eat up all my free time, and pro wrestling is awesome and inspire is an awesome product. So if there's something I can do to, you know, help people see that, then I'd love to. And, uh, Max, who is probably my, my, uh, most talked to creative contact at inspire is real supportive with the direction that I, that I'm aiming for. And so we're, we're still not there. It's a lot of trial and error and I'm essentially a, a one person video crew. There I am <laughs> in my, yellow plaid shirt that I wear all the time. <laughs> um, I, but so, I will say it's miles ahead of what we had before. Uh, mm -hmm. For those that have not seen some of our earlier stuff, it's not the greatest. Um, basically, because it was produced by us who don't really know how to do it was that. Kind kind of, of it was stuff. kind of a minus one person production crew, right? Oh, very <laughs> much so. Um, well, that's, that's what yeah. most indie wrestling looks yeah. like. At least oh, the yeah. stuff that's readily available. Yeah. But I, I, talking about sort of how it looks, I love the way our sweat like, when the uh, our recent event, the Quick and the Dead, came out, uh, I watched that like twenty minutes, like or, or not twenty minutes, uh, twenty times over, I should say, um, because I loved it so much. Um, the, you can, I can tell also, like you're you've injected a lot of your artistic sort of like mm -hmm. vision stuff that you you know the, your your movie um, experience into this. Uh, do you feel do you feel like um, you've sort of taken it in that direction and, and sort of given it sort of a new twist onto what? Uh, people sort of expect out of an indie wrestling production? Uh, I hope so. Um, it's funny because when I, when I talked to Max about the direction that I would want to take it visually, I, I had not been to an Inspire show yet. I had just seen, you know, like cell phone video or uh, I think there's a guy who shoots like standard def handy cam and put, puts it on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. I'd seen matches and so, and I'd seen uh, the stills that uh, Kelly shot. Um, so I knew what the space looked like. And Kelly's stills looked awesome because they have it's like really low key lighting. Uh, it's it just reminds me a lot of the really cool photos you would see of indie wrestling and like PWI. Um, mm. If that makes I, I I don't read PWI anymore, so there's probably still uh, <laughs> I really cool photos in there. Putting it on yeah. Stands. Yeah. <laughs> oh okay. Um, so I I talked to Max and and I I told him like well sort of it's the the Paul Heyman strategy uh, accentuate the positives hide the negatives mm -hmm. so you have a cool looking theater with uh, low key lighting so let's shoot it like that let's shoot it dark let's have it just highlight the ring let's uh, have it's it that inherently has a more filmic kind of cinematic vibe 
Uh, mm -hmm. And so I combined that with shooting uh, 24 frames, um, which is how I would shoot a movie. And you do get a little bit more of a cinema feel. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, I, I treated the hell out of the colors to uh, kind of give it a little more depth. Uh, otherwise, it's just, you know, big, bright orange spotlights. And there's Mr. Houston Carson, who's bright and orange enough as it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, I like I like Carson. That's that's not supposed to be a dig. I hope I don't get any. <laughs> Love you, Carson. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I know. Say the first I saw this, that even your titles are very uh, feel very indie movie ish. It's not the, the you know even like what we're doing on this show here with a across the bottom or anything like you would you would yes like me. I'm just kind of tossing some uh, uh, title cards or or, or uh, final cut third in there uh, for mine. Yeah. Um, what are the challenges? So, so you're doing a lot of post processing on this, right? A little bit. It's some of that's to mask uh, the hard camera that we're using isn't the best. Mm -hmm. So if you looked at the raw video, it's it's pretty plain. Um, yeah. And the second show that I worked that should be online uh, Thursday, just in time to really hype the show this weekend, you'll be able awesome. to watch uh, Ecstasy of Gold uh, before this week is over. The whole, the whole thing will be online. Um, we got we got a hold of some better gear um good but it's it's really it's just making what we're able to do with the uh resources we have mm -hmm. make it look as, as cool and uh and slick as possible and i, and I can yeah. i can attest to that like sort of from working from my perspective at the commentary table like it seems it i never did like this is a lot of stuff but it looks just like the finished product looks so amazing to it the does. point where it does. It sort of comes together in the end. I, I really, I really love um, the stuff you put into it. I really think so. Mm. Um, uh, here's a, a question I wanted to pose about that sort of in a sense. Uh, now that you are working for Inspire, now that you are doing that stuff, um, what do you think has been your greatest challenge so far, and also your greatest reward from uh, doing the uh, production? Uh, well, the greatest challenge is. Um, so there's there's people that are that are more than willing to help uh they don't necessarily have uh i mean it's 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 the conundrum you know you, you can't get experience unless you're given a chance to gain experience so right a, a lot of people are willing to help but they don't have a whole lot of experience uh so you have to deal with certain things like uh i like this last show um there's a lot of things running like the way that you're recording commentary and mm -hmm. the way that the hard camera's working i got pulled away a couple times because People thought me things were freaking out, you know, not really thinking it wasn't going to record. Yeah, yeah. It was a couple, a couple different times. Like one of the times, I had to leave, and I'm like, "Hey, uh, Brandon, Mr. Ring announcer, don't leave yet. <laughs> Hold this camera. I'll be right back." Um, and you know, it, it turns out it was working. Uh, so there's there's hiccups to where, like, let's say we had an infinite budget, we would have you know right. uh, salaried crew people assigned to all of these tasks, and uh, but I'm 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 used to that with filmmaking too. Just uh, very ultra low budgets. That, that's why Greenless Studios is called Greenless. It it means no money, moneyless. Mm. <laughs> so, but not uh, not without grit. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess, and in, in turn, what would you think would be sort of the biggest reward oh. that you you gained from it? Um. Well, the positive response is is really uh, satisfying. Uh, and just being able to contribute and feel like I contributed, you know, I'm, I'm five foot nothing and I don't think I could beat anybody on the roster in arm <laughs> wrestling. So my place is behind the camera, unless there's some weird, like, unless Andy Dalton interrupts the meet me there premiere. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get into the ring with anybody. <laughs> so fantasy. Hey, booking. I say you, I, you, me, and Brandon, we can team up if we're if we're a collective unit. Then maybe, then maybe we can handle these guys. But yeah, can I be the one that has the heart attack? Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so Sorg, because uh, I, 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 the minute I, I told uh, Sorg that you were going to be on, I knew he was going to be excited to talk tech with you since this is the stuff that he does. Um, up in Pittsburgh. So, Sorg, I'll, I'll allot the floor to you if you have any questions. Or, or, oh, I have so or, many, but I don't know how geeky I want to get. Um, <laughs> I, I guess the first question, technically, what are you using? What kind of cameras are you using for this? What are you What are you editing on? Um, well, I'm editing. Uh, I'm. It's a, it's a Mac Pro. 
uh, I don't know the actual specs. I bought it secondhand and mm-hmm. swapped out a, a lot of it. So it's a Frankenstein Mac Pro. Um, <laughs> like it's got a PC uh, Quadro in, NVIDIA card that's not supposed to work with it, but it does. Nice. Uh, and I, I use mostly Adobe. So Premiere, yeah. sometimes After Effects, but uh, like you said with the titles, I, I don't like to get flashy. I, yeah. I like to keep it simple. Stu- uh, I was going to say keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I like to keep it simple. Uh, so I do almost everything in Premiere, including color correction. Um, the cameras, uh, we were using a like Canon, like tiny little handy cam that just ha- uh, happened to shoot 24 frames. It was like a friend of a friend had this camera. And I could get a hold of uh, a better, like, larger, um, not quite ENG, but sort of, it was the Sony version of the the Panasonic DVX. It looks just like the, the DVX. Um, so it was actually standard def. The, the footage you're showing right now mm-hmm. is standard def blown up to match the okay. uh, HD from the hard camera. Okay. The second show, uh, we had a... Uh, had a little bit better luck acquiring uh, gear. So we had a 1080p camera for the hard camera and for my handheld camera. They're, they're both Canons, both shooting the same type of video. So the frame rate issues that I ran into from doing the uh, 24 frame pull down uh, should not happen, mm. which for most of this footage, I don't think it's, it's that bad. But every now and then when you cut between 24 and this footage, this handheld footage, it takes a second for it to ramp up. It annoys the hell out of me. See, a lot of times, uh, <laughs> in, uh, 24 frames, that, that's a little tough sometimes with, with high motion like pro wrestling does, right? Yeah, but uh, I think that's okay. Like, I, mm-hmm. I'm i a 24 frame uh, purist, I guess. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm the world's worst film snob. Like, <laughs> every movie I was told to like in film school, I didn't really do anything for me. Um I, yeah, I, without, I'm, I'm not going to, yeah, there's not really a way to say that without sounding super hipstery, but, <laughs> uh, I don't like 24 frame because like my film, whatever told me to my film school, all, all everybody mm-hmm. that I know from film school is like in love with the 48 frame Peter Jackson 3d stuff. And I, I just think it's stupid. I, I, I want to shoot everything in 24 frame. And then as far as like the blur, as far as the blur goes, I mean, that's, that's actually what it is like in real life. So if somebody runs by you super fast and body slams somebody, you're not going to see it like crystal clear. It's going to be blurry and it's going to be, uh, I don't know, shocking. I don't, that's a, that's a bad, <laughs> bad adjective. Yeah. I, you, the weirdest, the weirdest setup I've ever seen for a pro wrestling shoot, not one I was involved with when I just attended, uh, they had two DSLRs on both ring side and then they just had like a regular HDV. I think it was, may have been HDV. Hopefully it was at least HDV. Um, and I, I could not imagine how that worked out. Cause I, because the DSLRs again, you know, they have, focus issues and everything like that. They had nice mm-hmm. little kind of shoulder rigs, um, but it, it sounds like they didn't do too well with the shoot from the sounds of it. Yeah, I would shoot the entire show uh, with DSLR, and that's that's when I talked with Max about how to approach that first show. I told him I can do the entire show with crappy gear mm-hmm. and do my best in post, or I can shoot just the main event with uh, a couple of DSLRs and make the main event look uh, you know, th- the best that I possibly can. And we, we opted to do the whole show, uh, obviously, but if, if my gear could support that, like, I think my DSLR that I used to shoot my, uh, my features with, uh, it'll only do like 15 minutes of video at a time. Yeah. Yeah. And the sensor, problem. the sensor overheats, uh, wow. Yeah. So it's great for film. Cause you know, you shoot for five minutes, you reset, you take a break. The camera's not, taxed for three hours plus straight so i don't know how you would do an entire show on dslr Mm -hmm. um there's definitely uh options to use uh you know 35 millimeter lenses on a video camera that's that's pretty accessible uh it's a little bit out of our budget right now uh but 
that's the aesthetic that I'd like to achieve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Um, do you take a lot of your cues or uh, from, you know, say WWE programming as, as far as how they're presenting their stuff? I'm mean, obviously you're adding your kind of filmmaking flair to it. Um, but it, do you do you consider a lot of that from what you what you've seen? Is that a lot of the influence here? Yeah, I mean that's that's not that's inescapable. I think yeah. I've been exposed to so much of that. Obviously, the formula of hard camera and then at least one roaming camera is uh, not necessarily a WWE thing uh, mm -hmm. as far as inventing that formula, but it's that's the mainstream TV wrestling style. Um, and just instinctively, when I'm around ringside and somebody's in the ring cutting a promo, my first instinct is, well, I got to walk up the steps and, you know, hold the camera over the ropes because um, I've seen people do that on TV. Hmm. But as, as far as just the style that I would like to present is uh, I don't want to replicate what it's like to be there live. And I think that's kind of what uh, WWE does. They want you to feel the pyro and you know see how big the arena is and mm -hmm. uh i don't i don't want to do that i want to make this a very self-contained like watching this on video is a different experience than sitting in the front row because i think both i think both are important gives a reason to want to see the show from that different angle later even if they bought the ticket yeah i think so and that's that's exactly how it is for me like watching uh, hero versus row behind the camera mm -hmm. and then as i'm editing it it's a totally different experience nice. oh yeah nice um and i know it's like I, I noticed your shots are very um I, the first word comes to mind is frantic but like it, it feels like to me watching this um I, I don't know if, i don't think they still do this aim and you can correct me but remember tna would always do those ridiculously like zoom close-up you know wild shots in the ring uh, for a lot of their mm. promotional stuff. Like, it feels like that, but actually done right. <laughs> <laughs> if I can say that. Um, but, but it does, because uh, you're, like, I know for it us... It feels we, very, I, I, it's, it's like, maybe some of a cliched phrase, but it seems very action-based. like based Yeah, action yeah. Action. I mean, I know when we do it, like, we're very kind of staring, hey, get the action, follow the action, and we're saying, give me a facial shot if they're, you know, if, if they're doing something cool there, or or if they're, you know, in a hold, or, uh, you know, submission hold and reacting, uh, and especially, like, reaction to the pins. Like, that. that's my kind of get on, get in on the face, and we, we don't do any really really big moves until we do that. Hey, zoom in, get the face, get the reaction. If they're actually doing something like that. Um, mm -hmm. um, well, it looks like you, you do a, a bit more uh, movement for that. Can you tell me a little bit more of the thinking on, on, on that idea? Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't like holding. Um, if it, I don't like even cutting to the hard camera if I don't have to, I, I, I love close-ups in wrestling. Uh, especially in small spaces like this, because you get that that effect of the background just sort of blacking out yeah. to where it looks like you're in a black box theater. And yeah, especially like stuff like this where they're this is maybe a little too uh, the lighting on them is a little too low. We mm -hmm. we should have had a light shooting from the other side of the ring at them. I'm always late for these shows too, so this this uh, <laughs> this weekend I'm going to get there yeah. as early as I can to actually uh, adjust the lights more than I can. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and other things like the the hard cameras pointing toward the projection booth, I think, or whatever that mm -hmm. glass room up there is. If you look the other way, that we would see the stage, and it's awesome looking. Um, maybe a little too grand for us right now since we don't have like a badass entrance ramp, but I don't know. There's lots of production things that. Uh, are just going to improve. It's going to get even cooler. But as far as the the shooting style, um, yeah, it does, like, wrestling feels more exciting to me, if I, if I see it that way. Uh, it, I guess you, you could go overboard, and I probably do a little bit to where it's kind of, you know, born, born ultimatum style where you can't really tell what's going on. So you do run the risk if you're shooting it too tight and you're not yeah. catching every bit of the action yeah. but that's that's just part of my strategy to sort of give you more than one perspective you're and, not just and, watching it from one 
vantage point. And it's kind of nice. You always, you do always have the backup of, you do have everything on hard cam, right? And, and, and yes. you can make that decision later. You are post editing it. We're, this is most of our stuff. We do live edit. And I was like, if I, unless I screwed something up really bad, we don't really go back into that. Um, and, yeah. and, and sort of yeah. going off like your point of like how you would prefer like more of the roaming cam stuff as opposed to like you, you barely utilize hard cam if you need it. Um, one of my always biggest pet peeves with like produce wrestling, especially WWE is when they do a segment where it's clearly like they're doing things for the video package. Yeah. Yeah. And clearly setting it up for that. I, I think the way this is done, I think, because like you mentioned, like this is like, you know, your first, you've, you know, working two shows, like the coordination, I guess. And, and, mm-hmm. you know, is, mm-hmm. and like working with people that have never done this stuff before. Um, uh, but you can still, you still have those shots to where if, you know, you want to do something down the line, it's there and it still looks amazing. Like, and I think that's also uh, doing it for TV because I remember working Prime, uh, like they were like, you know, hey, make sure you get the shot of this guy. Make sure you, because again, getting the getting the what's that closing shot versus this is the show in its entirety. Um, it, it definitely is a different thinking as far as that. You, it, it, it's you know, without with everything, you know, versus movies, you know, you 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 know, you don't have as many restraints on time versus if you were doing like a half hour, which is really a twenty two minute show. You know, yeah. um, like I think that that just goes along with that philosophy. And they, you know, of course, WWE's got down to whatever science they have over the years, too. So. Yeah, we need more pointing at signs. I think. <laughs> certainly, certainly. Um, excellent, excellent. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, I guess the one thing I do want to mention beforehand, and in sort of a, in a turn to sort of plug the stuff that you're doing, uh, we mentioned Meet Me There, the movie starring uh, Dustin Rhodes, uh, and you uh, recently uh, for the uh, on all the Meet Me There sort of social media stuff uh, announced the premiere of the movie, which is actually going to be happening WrestleMania weekend. Am I right? That is correct. Yes, April fourth uh, in New Orleans with uh, very special appearances by uh, cast crew and especially the cast that uh, people are going to be really interested in seeing. So Excellent. that's uh, no, no, no face paint, but there will be a gold carpet. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, so yeah. Uh, and uh, Lex, if you, you're totally free to join us on for the rest of the conversation. Uh, but if, uh, if people want to find you uh, on social media or uh, in any venture, uh, where, where can they uh, find you? Uh, well, it's, it's Greenless for pretty much everything. That's G-R-E-E-N-L-E-S-S, as in having no green, no money. <laughs> uh, so at Greenless, uh, Facebook slash Greenless, Greenless.com. Um, I'm on the Instagram, so I think, I think on Apple mobile gaming, somebody used my screen name, but other than that, you can find me. (laughs) It's a weird one for the gaming site. (laughs) Yeah. I had to use hashtag greenlist to play flappy bird. Oh no. Uh, (laughs) That game sucks. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I, I, I'm just I literally just, Flappy Brian and I, I literally just re-de- re-deleted it from my phone as you said that <laughs> from, from da- re-downloading <laughs> it for the text show earlier. But excellent. Yeah, hey, I got to th- I got to 33. I got my gold medal, and then I uninstalled it because I beat it. And fuck that game. <laughs> what more can you do after that? Yeah, why would you want to? Now, Flappy Brian, that's the game that's going to be the next oh, one. Jesus. Yeah, I don't know. I think that I think those pipes are just burying him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh please move on please <laughs> <laughs> amazing um but yeah uh, i guess it's time to sort of talk about the indie wrestling stuff that uh, is happening this weekend some of the discussion stuff that we wanted to talk about hey you know uh, you know what we wanted to talk about that i can't talk about uh, uh, extreme rising because it didn't happen oh yeah how about that sorg <laughs> Well, no, I, I, they uh, it came down. Well, of course, I was supposed to do video there with a, a great team with uh, Mike Moran, who did Prime Wrestling uh, for the last few years. Uh, he does a lot of great MMA stuff too, uh, up in up in Cleveland. I, have, I haven't had a chance to get up there and check it out. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, it was apparently canceled due to weather. Uh, I will not get into any other speculations or anything like because I really do want to work with them. They would come in town, but I, but either in way, in all fairness, if it was as cold as Texas is now, I. You don't necessarily blame them. <laughs> I, don't, like, I don't rule that out. <laughs> I was a little bit because they they canceled it two days in advance, and there was like no snow on Saturday 
when it finally happened. So it was just kind of mm-hmm. weird to me. Uh, but now it's still coming back in May, uh, first week in May. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you know, sad, a lot of friends of the show, friends from, uh, you know, uh, regional stuff are going to be involved in that. And, and I'm kind of curious to see if Extreme Rising, you know, what it's about and everything. I've heard great things from, you know, a lot of people that worked here last time. Uh, it was up in the old... Um, I know it used to be called the Golden Dome. It might be the Beaver Dome now up in Manaka where they used to do like some of the early ECW pay-per-views. Um, I heard there was a great turnout with that and everything. So eh, it's a shame, but it, it, it'll come back hopefully. And uh, and I hope to report on that then. So uh, that, That'll be good. Yeah. I'm always... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm always sad. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm always sad every time I, I, I have an opportunity uh like that to uh to actually get ringside again because i'm behind the switcher now uh and i kind of miss that so definitely awesome uh, well, what yeah, do you chant what that? do you chant at extreme rising i'm just curious i think people just end up it's ecw it has to be right <laughs> like what what are you what are you gonna do you know no one knows what the chant i mean when stevie ECW stevie happens other than ecw <laughs> stevie richards is a champion uh sabu's all up and down that thing i mean it's like a sprinkling of maybe a third of the card is old ecw guys it's all like holy shit otherwise i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I, I, I should go check out the ipay pay review i guess so <laughs> but yeah um so i know soar we we talked last week about uh you or er, Last week or two weeks ago, probably last week, uh, about you attending the Ring of Honor event that happened in Pittsburgh this weekend where they did yes. some TV taping stuff and that. Uh, I went to the one this week in San Antonio. Uh, so, yeah, let's let's compare and contrast as they do. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I actually didn't mind the show. I thought it was really good. Um, it, I found it better than the last time they came to San Antonio because I, I, I can understand people that appreciate Ring of Honor. Um, their shows are super long. Um, and not in a sense of like the time frame, but like the the time frame of the individual matches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're slightly draining. Hey, so you, um, it was a TV taping for you guys? Uh, well, the taping, the, uh, some of the matches will be on TV. Okay, okay, and I, yeah, I think that's a difference too because I, I noticed that, and I I didn't know if it was a straight up. It wasn't the same format as a TV taping before, uh, but they just said, "Hey, we're going to be on TV," and they did like two openers and they said it was three episodes which was mm-hmm. like i can't see them splitting up the show any other way than actually using the entire card yeah um, and then they well for us like they started the show filming like some special like i guess they're doing some like women of honor special okay or something so they filmed some shots for that um and then that like led into the actual like show mm. um but it was an interesting show um there's a lot, actually a lot of really good matches on there. I, I like the two main events. Uh, the, there was a four-way with Kevin Steen, Michael Elgin, Jay Lethal, and Tommaso Ciampa that I thought was fairly good. Um, really enjoyable. Uh, the crowd loved Kevin Steen. Uh, it's amazing seeing like top independent talents coming to Texas for the first time. Mm-hmm. When Texas is like sort of the place where like you don't get a lot of you know those kind of names and people yeah. just losing their mind. Nice. Um, uh, it was great to see uh, uh, ACH and Tadarius Thomas won uh, a proving ground match against Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Um, the pe- the group I was in, I was actually sitting in front of some of ACH's family that was there, uh, which was amazing. <laughs> um, it, was, it was just awesome. Um, there were a lot of good matches on that card. Uh, I, I I did enjoy myself a lot. It was it was a fun show. Um, um, I will. Uh, here's my uh, uh, con to the show. Uh, uh, Proof that uh, Ring of Honor, you know, public, publicly traded company, uh, all that, can still be sort of carny. Um, yeah, um, at the last time they were in San Antonio, it's at the um, San Antonio Shrine Auditorium, which is, um, uh, when I went there, this was my first time going to the auditorium, there was uh, free parking. And there was totally free parking, like every, like there was a good amount of space in their parking lot, like everything was good. Uh, this time they charged for parking. Um, but the building didn't charge for parking. Uh, Ring of Honor did. How, really? Because they, How they you... gave me a ticket that said uh, it was a Ring of Honor wrestling parking ticket. Um, so, yeah. Not the coolest thing to do. That's weird. <laughs> in my opinion. That, you, you're you sure that wasn't like a TV or I'm sorry, uh, a venue as- associated thing? Nope. Uh, because, well, like I mentioned last time, parking was entirely free at the last show. True, true. But they were there. I actually have the ticket. One second. 
Phil uh, uh, for time on the podcast. Phil for time. So uh, I had to pay for parking because it was downtown Pittsburgh, and it did not have ROH on my ticket. So. Yes, uh, here it is. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, Ring of Honor uh, parking pass. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's there's a memento for you, I guess. Oh yeah. Uh, Wait, does it oh, yeah. does it does it mention the venue on there, or can you use that at all of their shows? <laughs> and it does say the date and the venue. Sadly, can, can, um, can you send that up here? I'll use it here next time they're at the Ross River Ice Gardens, which is like in the middle of nowhere. So there's no way. Oh, they did charge for parking there too. Actually. Oh, did they? Uh, did they know I didn't get I didn't get a spiffy pass. No, I think that was just Ross River Ice Gardens. Um, okay. Because I don't know where the hell you're going to park a field somewhere. I don't. I have no idea where you would. Where would you walk from in that situation? Um, yeah, that, that's yeah. weird. I, I don't know. So, I, I, yeah, top three. I, I don't be, know about that. You'd still be pretty carny. That's all I got to say about that. But no, it was a fun time. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I got to see some cool people. So uh, it was real good. Uh, so yeah, um, if you if you are at a Ring of Honor show near you, go to it, have fun, but also bring money for parking. Um, <laughs> and for the five dollar bin too. Oh, and I didn't know about the five. Yeah, Kelly Kyle parked for free, but that's because he worked for them and took photos. So he's balling. Way, way to rub it in, Kelly. And first he plays um, first he plays Gold Dust Arms, and now he's like balling and free parking <laughs> at the ROH shows. I mean, that guy. Is, that Kelly, guy is big, Kelly is so big league. He is so big league. He is like Mister uh, Super Indie over there. <laughs> Jesus, um, but yeah. So uh, that's what happened uh, this past weekend. Uh, you, there's more discussion stuff that I think we wanted to talk about. I know Sword wanted to bring up discussion. Me and him both got the chance to listen to the uh, recent uh, Art of Wrestling podcast that had Mike Quackenbush yeah. on. Yeah. Um, a podcast where he uh, discussed some of the stuff that is happening with Chikara, uh, sort of the return, and sort of basically, in a sense of explanation for it all. Uh, and I, rem- uh, I know me and Sorg took a lot from it. Uh, yeah. I, I love listening to that. Like, I can listen to Mike Quackenbush like, talk for hours. Like, yeah, I love and, it. and I, I enjoy I, have, I haven't kept up on him recently, but I, I love the other podcast he does, Grizzly, Big, Grizzly Bear Egg Cafe that he does with mm-hmm. uh, Clayton Morris from Fox and Friends. But they're actually good buddies, you know, and it's, it's cool, cool to have a friend cast to listen to like that. Um, but then they start listening, talking about they might be giants and stuff, and I just can't follow along. <laughs> but they interview Stan Bush from the Transformers song, and, it, and that's the that was the best. Um, anyways, no, no, it was, a, it was a fantastic interview, as they usually are on our wrestling, but they really did uh, attack. And, of course, most I know from what's going on in Chikara, I, I'm learning from you, from Alex Carr's, um, and, and hearing the explanation and the thing that really struck me was the, it's a performance art mm. and, and, and then the whole, uh, uh, our brand of ice cream discussion on there. Um, and you may not like our brand of ice cream, but these are, but it's for the people that do like it. And they're the ones that are going to come back. Um, I know a lot of people that really do dog on Jakar. It's a different kind. I know people that have called it uh, expo- uh, business exposing bullshit, you know. Um, but I like that stuff, you know. I, it, it, you, you've been to a Chakar show. I, I've been to a couple of them here in King of Trios, uh, out in Philly and stuff. And I went to one with you like yeah, uh, yeah. three years ago. Yeah, the Daniel Bryan uh, show up in Cleveland. Um, and and it's it's great to see like they that they – and I didn't know some of this stuff – um, I'm not, I'm not sure if you knew some of this part too. Um, but of course there was the ashes video, the whole, Hey, a, a cor- evil corporation took over, it went away. And so it's part of the story that it disappeared, canceled all dates, really kind of, uh, uh, made that line sketchy of the real and the, and the imaginary, the part where, um, mm-hmm. was it the bad guys came to people's door? Yeah, uh, uh, members of the TR conglomerate. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, like, they actually, people's door to. They actually went to fans' houses to harass them, I think it was. They were these secret shows where if you followed along, you'd end up in a park and they, they did a show there. I think I saw, I think that was one of the videos you sent me where they're in that weird warehouse. Is that mm-hmm. is that right? Um, I mean there's it, it was like it was like the the, the 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 strangest professional wrestling augmented reality game. Uh, it, it, like from the way he was describing it, uh, and it was tremendous, and I love yeah. it. And and this is the, something that I think if you're following along, and uh, uh, if if you're you've been on the car ride for a while, it's an amazing trip. And 
And I was thinking this, and he actually said it in a podcast later. I'm thinking in the comic book size, okay, hey, here's a jumping on point for me. You know, mm-hmm. um, like he addressed that whole idea because I, I mean, I, I know I felt like Man, I need to go back, catch some of the storyline. Like I drop in here and there, catch a show uh, and, and all this stuff's happening. I need somebody to explain it to me, you know, or check mm-hmm. out the site. And I really they were always really good about explaining that on the site, following the podcast, at least our podcast at GoGo. Um, um, so, yeah, it, it was pretty good. It, it, and, and in the performance art side of things always brings me back to, you know, talking again, you know, a guy we talked on the Mayhem show with, uh, Mike Kingston with the Headlock comic book. And mm-hmm. that whole entire thing is explaining, oh, pro wrestling is like theater, but more physical. Like to the point where the subject of the comic is a kid that quits his drama college courses, I believe. It's been a couple of years since I read them, um, to go pursue professional wrestling. And talks right. about, you know, all the kind of back and forth and, you know, you know again, what he goes through to kind of make it in the business. Um, so it's really just kind of like a rookie year kind of thing. Um, so uh, it's it, it really is. And I know a lot of people don't think of it that way. Um, a lot of people think of it as a sport or fake or, you know, something like that. Um, or it's like a dumbed down version of like whatever. Like, yeah, it's. It's it's I, I love the performance art comparison. I think it's it's very telling as to how to really describe wrestling. And, I, and the other thing I really took from the podcast is sort of the aspect of like this in the sense of like not just the the storyline itself, but the fact that they were an independent wrestling promotion doing this storyline. How ballsy it truly was! Uh, like he makes the comparison of like you know. If, you know, my accountant found out, like, the stuff I was doing with Chikara, like, he would tell me to quit every year. No, I think like, I think the point is he did tell him to quit every year from yeah, a financial much. perspective. Like, and I think and I'm, I think we're going to talk about this in another discussion point, but, like, the finance of independent wrestling. And, I, I mean, Lex was talking to us about how, like, you know, it's independent wrestling and, and you know, to do, to do as much as you can with as little. Yeah. Like, and you know they're not making like WWE money, and they're not they don't have that staff and that production and, and stuff like that. But you can still put as much as you can into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's way more that... interesting than anything that's on mainstream TV wrestling. I mean, mm-hmm. time time travel. That's the only two words you need to say. Right, <laughs> and then just using the resources you have, and sort of like the, the thing you mentioned, like the Paul Heyman theory of accentuating the positives and hiding the negatives. Like that's what you know. You can still be a success, and you have to take risks, but that's part of it. Like it's it's part of the whole concept. Um, so I love that podcast. Uh, if you haven't listened to it yet, go listen to it because it's it's really informative, and I, I I've taken a lot out of that. So um, some really great stuff there. Um, but to talk about sort of uh, more production stuff, uh, stuff that happened over the weekend that uh, uh, caused some discussion. Um, uh, I uh, purchased the uh, recent Women's Superstars Uncensored pay-per-view, uh, iPay-per-view, I should say, uh, for WSU. It was a big event for them. Uh, they were having a lot of high-profile matches like Jessica Havoc versus Alpha Female from Germany, uh, the return of Athena and Lufisto in a, in a match. Like it was, it was one of their bigger shows. Um, and sadly, the iPay-per-view uh, didn't work. Um, from what I was told uh, and from what they had uh uh, posted about they had lost connection in their building basically and weren't able to get the i pay per view up at all. Um, and uh, they just recently now um, were able to edit everything together and get a, a video on demand version of it up uh, for those of people that bought it. Um, but Drew Cordero, who uh, is the owner of WSU and also um, owns uh, Beyond Wrestling, uh, who recently bought WSU, um, uh, basically gave me a lengthy apology about what happened. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, sort of disappointed with the whole thing based on how um, all, great their show, it was the best show under their new regime and it's upsetting that they couldn't get it out to people like that. Uh, they did issue refunds, but uh, they gave you the option of you could basically get a full refund uh, of the purchase for the show um, or you could keep the video on demand version, which you have for 14 days, I believe, and then also get a free uh, one month to their streaming service, uh, Stream WSU. Um, and from what uh, I believe there was a post from them on Twitter that uh, luckily they've gotten a lot of support from it uh, out of the, you know, they said it was their highest buy rate for their iPay per view, and currently only three people have asked for full refunds. All right. Um, All right. Which is, which is, I think is great. Um, and it's sort of, but I think um, 
and my opinion of like the whole stuff is really transformed constantly. Like I'm always like transforming my opinion on this. Um, in a sense, from a wrestling company, I think the idea of eye pay per view is still very risky. Um, I don't think that if you have enough unless you have enough money and enough resources and enough production that you should be doing it necessarily. Um, I don't know if that was necessarily the case for WSU. I think this was an incident. They had done eye pay-per-view in the past. I have bought their eye pay-per-views in the past and they have been uh, fairly well. Um, but uh, this was sort of a, almost a freak accident in a sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a lot of outrage of, I've seen people post from like some of the statements that WSU released, like, Oh, you're making excuses. Like, like, what are you doing? Like, this is ridiculous. I'm never, you know, you know, buying your eye pay-per-views again. I'm going to go to this indie company and this indie right. company. It's like, well, right. they can have the same problem. Well, you know, and I go back to, uh, you talk about your, your publicly traded company or whatever. I, I presume actually, no, I actually did see a stock. I actually went to Sinclair's site to double check. They were publicly traded. Uh, they had a bit of a dip recently, by the way, uh, ring of honor, can't hold down a streaming pay-per-view and they have exactly. the money i don't know how much money sinclair allocates to them but they're not able to pull it off and mm-hmm. and, and you know a friend of ours um uh you know uh, rob from the awesome cast previously he works at a company where they go do these trade show things they do these big grand kind of technology uh setups and one of the big things is you need redundancies for your, your redundancy especially when it comes to technology when you go to a place the reason I don't do I pay per views, in which you know, I probably technically on a dumbed down technicality, I'm already doing live streaming for most of my shows. I just need to plug that into a computer. I'm already recording to a computer, uh, but then I you know redundancy that and you know shoot it out to, over an internet connection. Ideally, mm-hmm. we do this here. I could take this software and do it. Um, I will not because I don't want to depend on the Court Time Sports Center or. My God, right. the West Student Gymnasium, I don't even think knows what internet is, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't take into account with indies is that these guys are running out of armories. They're running out of, you know, yeah. you know, buildings like that. They're, the WSU pay-per-view ran out of the flyer skate zone. There was, um, um, I actually, amateur wrestling. My nephew is a uh, senior in high school up here. Uh, actually, his team, Reynolds, congratulations, second in the state uh, this over this past weekend. Um, but there was a local-ish <laughs> company that was doing, basically, it looked like they were doing eye pay-per-views for amateur wrestling. Like, I went, they went, they had a banner up, they had a camera set up, and, and my sister was telling them they're from my hometown. Um, and, uh, and, and they get there, and there was like, yeah, they don't have any connection for the internet. I'm like, how did they not even know <laughs> And then they said they were going to do this. He's like, yeah, they were going to do this. And they showed up and said there's there no internet. It's like, why don't you check? You know, <laughs> I, you know, how many of these places are doing the due diligence to go to the venues and say, you know, and do a speed test on the connection, you know, and, and making sure, oh, that's the up speed, which I need to sense the stuff out. Because that's usually the part that people skimp on, especially on business connections. I looked at business connections when we ran a cafe. They were horrible for what you pay for they give you a crappy dsl connection you're not running you're not sending a netflix the other way basically and that's the way you have to think about this um and but the problem is i think a lot of these part people are also not techno technologically minded maybe a little bit maybe just enough to try to get this off the ground um but it's not like they're 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 um uh, hiring silicon valley people to try to run these kinds of things um and they can't really and, and they have to think about redundancies they have to not depend on that building maybe an LT uh, uh, cell thing would work in a pinch, you know. Um, but I don't know. To me, I want to make sure I can deliver that good, consistent HD feed, if I'm doing HD at least, um, or at least an SD feed. And and the, the IP review samples I've seen, some of the stuff you sent me, uh, Amen, some of the stuff that have been the freebie pay-per-views, they do not look up the snuff for that stuff. Yeah. The best-looking one, honestly, and I don't know if it looked live like that, but that National Pro Wrestling Day they did on, on YouTube actually looked pretty decent, other than a skipping problem they had. Um, but, you know, even that, you know, they had a little bit of... And, and, and the, the, I know WSU was promoting, uh, like, sort of uh, beforehand, before the show, that, like, they had a new production, like, sort of squad, like, new cameras and stuff like that. And and, and yeah, I watched back some of, the, some of the recorded stuff, and it looks so much better, which which is what makes it so, you know... It, it, really, is, it really is if a tree falls in the woods, the problem there, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, that's the fear of them. It's a, it can be very damaging. Yeah. Um, 
but you know, I mean, they, it, they, and, and I don't mean to be so hard on these guys, but it is like kind of an expectation thing. I understand we're doing things guerrilla, and there's a lot of opportunities. I mean, you know, podcasting is production guerrilla. You know, the setup I have duct taped together here, for instance. You know, I mean, it's it's it is, but you know, there's a you know, I do a lot of work to make sure we can broadcast every week. You know, <laughs> I mean, and I, th- and I thank you for that. So yeah, yeah, thank you. You know, um, and 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 I I just wonder like what fraction of that they're putting into these productions, especially the like, well, companies. T- they're bigger. Consider also uh, WWE Network is is working with uh, the guys that do MLB yeah. TV streaming. Yeah, and I buy that every year. Um, and you know, 162 games a year there's a handful of games that have streaming problems and these that's the that's the pinnacle um that that we're aiming for uh so with 162 games if you have a couple crappy feeds it's not going to hurt so much but when you're talking you know once a month or you know further between shows yeah. and you have that one show that you're going to be remembered for for a while and it screws up, it's a much bigger deal. So you're saying the problem is, well, there's two problems here. So there's frequency and then there's practice, right? Mm-hmm. So what we need to do, whether it's the production company or the Fed itself, needs to have weekly shows so, <laughs> so we get used to this. And yes. it's not so bad when it tanks. Daily. Daily, daily shows. shows. Yes. Taking less days off than hockey. We're going to bring back studio wrestling here in Pittsburgh, guys. We'll see if we can rent out the old uh, vacant Channel 11 studios. We'll get Maybe we'll get Bruno down there. You know, tell him it's, <laughs> tell, tell him it's Italian days up there, up in uh, Fine View, and we'll get him down there, right? Um, and, and, and we'll stream every day until we crack this nut. There no, there's, you know there's no internet up there, because they left that place in, like, 2002. So... <laughs> <laughs> There's actually I, I edited a, a zombie film uh, that that was filmed up there, so it was kind of cool to see that. So, yeah. I, anyways, anyways, but yeah, um, so, so yeah, that's uh, sort of some of the discussion stuff we wanted to talk about this week. Uh, there are indie events that I think people should check out this week. Uh, if uh, well, one, if you're if you are seeing any indie show and you know there's an indie show in your area, go to it, go support the guys uh, because it just aids to the scene and aids to the development of a. Uh, of uh, independent pro wrestling. Um, the first uh, indie show I want uh, think you should go to <coughs> uh, is a little company called Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, I have no event. idea what Inspire Pro Wrestling is at this point. No idea really? what's going on with this group. Where, really? you, where is this show? <laughs> it is actually, um, you may enjoy this, Alex. It's, at, it's in Austin, Texas, believe it or not. Uh, at Don't the uh, Mark. At the Marquesa Hall and Theater uh, this Sunday um, for Light the Fuse. Uh, should be a very fun show. Uh, I will be there. Lex will be there. Um, but also a ton of great wrestling will be there. Uh, Mike Dell defending his championship for the first time against Franco D'Angelo. Um, it was it was what sure to be a great match. Uh, uh, Ray Rowe taking on Robert Evans, which should be amazing. Uh, ACH in uh, what is to be the uh, last time you'll actually get to see ACH in Texas um, until November. Uh, because oh, wow. of his uh, uh, of his amazing schedule that he has now, uh, wrestling everywhere, nice. uh, and he'll and he'll be uh, wrestling Sammy Guevara. Um, there's gonna be a lot of great stuff on that show, so um, I encourage you to get your tickets at InspireProWrestling.com because that would make me happy. That would really make me happy. <laughs> um, so and go uh, as Lex mentioned uh, this Thursday. It looks like you can go to our YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Inspire Pro Video and check out uh, our latest event, Ecstasy of Gold, where some idiot's talking over it. I don't know. He's, I, I really wish he would shut up sometimes. Um, but yeah, uh, so go support that um, if you are in the Texas area because that would make me very, very happy. Um, also this week, a company that I wanted to uh, mention and talk about uh, that's having a big event this weekend uh, is for Beyond Wrestling. Uh, I mentioned before, uh, uh, now partnering with WSU, but they've been doing amazing stuff. Uh, They've been delivering some really awesome shows um, at FET Music uh, in Providence, Rhode Island, which is uh, an awesome venue. Um, They are really, I like that they're doing a lot more of these like big live shows where they really just pack the place. And um, it looks like a great card um, for this event, Sunday, February 16th in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, Kevin Steen in the main event is taking on Drew Gulak, uh, who was our Indie Challenge two weeks ago. Um, he was in a replacement for uh, Biff Busick. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa and Michael Elgin of Ring of Honor will also be uh, at that event. 
Uh, they'll be taking on the team of Chris Dickinson and Jacka. Uh, there's a lot of good uh, uh, local wrestling action from that area uh, competing on that show. Steve the Turtle uh, so, Wiener. I'm sorry? Steve the Turtle Wiener. Yeah, he'll be there too. It's completely um, in the so, poster. That's amazing. You, uh, for those that know, uh, Sork had the privilege of playing Connect Four with him once at he a uh, Tina Trios fan conclave. I did. He completely jobbed me. Oh. <laughs> That, that was nice of him, though. Um, but yeah, uh, go support uh, Beyond Wrestling. I believe you can go get tickets for that event at lookmanofans.com. My favorite uh, .com for an indie promotion ever. Yes, absolutely. Um, but and go support them because they, they do some really, really fun stuff um, uh, in independent wrestling. Uh, and I guess the last thing we should talk about, Sorg, is our challenge from last week. Bah, 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 hooligans! Hooligans, yeah. Hooligans. For those who don't know, our indie wrestling challenge, uh, which is we pick an indie wrestler or wrestlers in this case every week. Uh, we compose a playlist that you can find on youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show uh, that you can watch. And you're not limited to the playlist, uh, but you can check them out and uh, basically let us know what you like, what you don't like. Um, and go look at just go and explore more indie wrestling and indie wrestlers. Uh, that's sort of the modus uh, operandi for this thing. Um, so as Sorg mentioned, this week's challenge was a, a tag team known as the Hooligans, who are big in the Midwest. And so you uh, checked them out. Uh, what were your thoughts? So they don't. Okay, so so your sell your sell on me was these guys don't look like they're going to do a flippy move, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they completely do some flippy moves. Um, very kind of uh, other than, other than the occasional uh, what what was it? What ah oh, crap? I, what was the fat guy? The fat guy flip. That's what they called it. <laughs> uh, that that just cracked me up when I was watching this last week. Um, but they're the guys. If you're watching this on video, they're the guys in the beards. Um, they yeah, they just look like a couple of bikers or something in there. They look like they're gonna be your typical uh, weekend warrior um, um, in the bingo hall guys that that don't leave their town to wrestle, right? Uh, but mm. one, there's videos from freaking all over the midwest in this thing um, yeah they're going and they're going everywhere i know they're wrestling in texas uh sometime in march so mm-hmm. uh so yeah i think a great a great uh, mix from what i saw of kind of old school brawler you know mm-hmm. kind of guys uh again but the occasional like holy crap they just did a, a rope move you know um a, a real a real you know a real, a real surprise so i, I re- definitely recommend checking them out Awesome, awesome. So uh, yeah, go support the hooligans. And by the way, uh, some of the videos, some of the videos, I, I when I was posting this week, I know some people commented on um, their opponents were had some really interesting names. Like this one it was uh, the hooligans versus the Jollyville Fuckets and the yes. Sex Bombs, of course. This was a four way. It looks like I want to say AI, yeah, AIW. There's Pedro. I know him. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know Pedro. I know Pedro Cash. Uh, <laughs> for you, that's for you, Joe Dabrowski. Um, I was going to say Sorg's going to get Sorg, and like maybe one other person will get that. <laughs> and everybody who has no idea why we yell it at the IWC shows. Um, I'll take it. Hey. Uh, but no, no, yeah, definitely check it out. It's real cool. Now, awesome. I'm excited for this next one. Yes, because I, I, I asked Sorg, I was like, what, what do you want? What do I you... said, give me a lady. Because uh, so, and, and that's the one thing I like about independent wrestling. One thing I want to continue to do is the. Uh, Sort of the big talking point is the stuff you don't see on TV. Um, and uh, a lot of that is with women's wrestling because women's wrestling on TV, uh, not the greatest, but uh, there was a lot of great women's wrestling on the independent scene. You know, you uh, know, it didn't stop with Lita and Trish, if that's what you were into. Well, yeah. Right? Right? Fair, fair enough. And, and I would, because yeah, there was people great think, women's wrestling. Oh, I think the, the, the general people think, like, wow, Trish and Lita was the best stuff ever. Why are there no women wrestlers since then? Well, guess what? They're all out there, you know? And some of them get hired and they become AJ Lee and stuff like that. But here's the rest of them. And that includes your pick this week. Uh, one, Jessica Havoc, who is the current, uh, we mentioned WSU. She's the current WSU world champion, who she's held the belt for, I think, nearly two years now. Um, uh, great athlete that's really changing the face, I think, of, of the way women's press and wrestling is done. Um, very much, uh, instead of being considered almost a woman, is an imposing figure and sort of sort of shatters that boundary of what women's wrestling should be. Um, I composed a playlist of some of her matches 
Um, uh, some of our matches in WSU, uh, there's some mixed uh, matches that are on there, which mm -hmm. uh, are very interesting. Uh, and a lot of her promo work, which is, I think, one of her main selling points, which is the stuff that uh, I think got her really noticed. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that. We, oh, go ahead, sir. We need to have a discussion about mixed matches at some point, because I know we got to do should. some of that. I want to have that discussion. Especially like after the controversy after uh, International Pro Wrestling Day last year, and we actually had a chance to talk to Darcy Dixon uh, about that, since she was pretty involved with that. Um, so uh, that that's a whole other, whole other thing. And can I add one more thing, sir? Absolutely. I surprised. I was watching some stuff. If you have, um, and unfortunately, I don't think this one is, uh, uh, but... Uh, betas on Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime, uh, if you you know on Amazon On Demand or anything like that, uh, just look it up. It was one of those uh, kind of Amazon made shows. Uh, if you might not get half of it if you're not very geeky because it's about like Silicon Valley uh, startups and stuff like that. Um, but about episode four, they start getting into indie wrestling. Hmm. To uh, with some interesting ideas to the point, some mogul wants to purchase the local indie. Um, apparently, some of the guys are fans, and some really interesting discussion to the point where you'll have this. Uh, there, uh, poster on the wall I noticed was of the Young Bucks. Uh, There's a few other people in there, like uh, Brian Kendrick was actually in it, um, and I can't I didn't recognize any of the names when I when I flipped by, uh, but uh, it was kind of a refreshing thing. It looks like they're kind of riding that uh, a couple at least a couple episodes beyond that. Like so, you can check out the first three episodes of that. But I think they start to become pay if you don't have Amazon Prime uh, as of episode four, which is the one where uh, they really went deep into this. So very cool. So I'll definitely nice have to little check indie out. wrestling surprise. <laughs> Yes, sir. Um, so, yeah, that is the uh, Indie Mayhem show for this week. Thank you, Lex, for being on. Yes, that, thank uh, you. It was awesome. We definitely need to have you on again. Follow Goldust on Twitter. He's giving away tickets to the premiere in New Orleans. Nice. Oh, look at that. So you can get a free uh, – you can check out uh, uh, Lex Library and Production uh, if you're very lucky. Um, also, thanks for having me on the show. Right. Oh, no problem. Uh, <laughs> It was so, fun. Yeah, go uh, support him. Uh, go follow him on Twitter at Greenlist and go uh, to greenlist.com. Uh, go, uh, you know, contribute to his stuff any way he can. You can because it's. Go to inspireprowrestling.com instead. That, that, that's, a, <laughs> that's another one you can go to. Too. In the context uh, of this show. And of course, you can also go to pleasewrestlingmayhemshow.com. And you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and Spotify. Breaker. I think I started that last week. Uh, I'll find out in about an hour. Uh, you can also drop us lines <laughs> at good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Let us know anybody you think we should talk to on the indies, anything about the indies, anything you agree, disagree, any of that stuff. Anybody you want for a challenge for the week, let us know there. You can also drop us a line on the uh, voicemail for 412 206 WMS0. Get your voice on the show. Follow us on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Follow us on our own Twitters. I'm at Sorgatron. He's at Aiming to Please. Uh, he's at Greenless get him too um and uh check out all that stuff uh again uh we're also uh, wrestling mayhem show can be found on facebook google plus most of our conversations having on the facebook uh google plus group i'm no, facebook group wrestling mayhem show wow I'm mixing my social plus media. it's the last show of the day guys i'm gonna it's not gonna be it's gonna be, not gonna <laughs> you, be you, that you, smooth. you've had a long day so and we also we also talk wrestling starting at 9 p.m eastern time here at live.sugartronmedia.com with the wrestling mayhem show of course this show starts around about 11 p.m eastern again same address also works live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com if you go to either of those sites sugartron media wrestling mayhem show all the links are there uh for you to check out as well and we also throw out some little invites and stuff if you do follow us on Facebook uh, and Google Plus and the Twitters. So uh, keep an eye out for all that. Get connected with us so we can have a bigger conversation and spread the indie to the world. Right? I'm yeah. working on a tagline, guys. It's coming. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're six shows in. We're going to get one. We're going to yeah, get yeah, one. Yeah. You know, I don't even have a, I don't even have an ender, like 15 shows in the movie one, so I don't even know. Um, so until then, thanks to our guests. Thanks to all of you watching. Uh, go watch some uh, Andy Wrestling. Huh? Never said I wasn't